Assalamualaikum and good morning, good afternoon and good evening guys Welcome to your OB class So my name is Mr. Azwan Azan bin Perman I'll be teaching you guys this course So it's very unfortunate that we couldn't meet in our first class But that's okay uh, At least I got you got to see me yeah, Giving your short lecture here yeah. So I'm just going to focus on uh, giving the important mm -hmm. key points here And if there are things that you do not understand Or uh, probably was not explained properly by me contact me as soon as possible yeah so mm -hmm. let's move mm -hmm. on towards your first chapter of uh, this semester so now let's move on towards uh, the first slide here yeah so we're just going to go towards what is OB basically what is OB so OB I guess you already know it stands for organizational behavior so let's just uh, take one okay let's just take one uh, definition here by McShane here the study of what people think feel and do in around in and around organization so if you're working this organization behavior talks about you talks about the people you work with and the organization that you are in we're trying to understand we're trying to decipher we're trying to take a look at all different form of analysis that are coming from within an organization we're trying to understand the people there yeah we're trying to understand you you're trying, we're trying to understand me we're trying to understand your classmate especially within the context of employment where you work okay so this is what is said by organization organizational behavior so the rest of the definition there you can read it on your own uh there's a book actually there's a textbook that i that i have that i actually wanted you guys to buy the other day but uh we didn't have any uh we didn't get the chance to meet so if you can find this textbook but unlikely unlikely you can find it this is where uh, I base all of these uh, slides and lecture but I will try to give you uh, uh, I don't know soft copy of it if I could try to find it but in the meantime yeah this is a textbook that, that I'm using right now so if you cannot see if it's too too small or too blurry it's stated here organizational behavior by Steve L. McShane and Mary Ann Von Grino okay so this is the uh, Eight edition, okay. Eight number eight. So that's the textbook they're gonna use. But the slides that we have, that you have, is basically uh, a rendition of what the textbook is all about. Okay. But if you want to further your knowledge, you can buy the textbook next time. Yeah. Okay. So that is the definition there. Uh, what is OB as well? So it studies individual groups and structure. So it talks about not only a person, but also how and why and the reason why they interact or behave in such way in an organization. Uh, definition of organization so let's take a look at just one here according to McShane organizations are a group of people who work interdependently towards some pu purpose public sector more to give service to people public sector they are gaining to profit for the organization the internal environment so this is definition of organization it's a it's a group of people working so just imagine yourself working in an organization i believe some of you are already working so you know what is an organization is all about so i don't uh, need I don't need to focus much on definition of organization. This, uh, this first chapter is pretty clear, it's pretty simple. See as well, this is a, just an extension, Make to say. At the end here, you can take a look at the arrow down there. Yeah, you can see the arrow down there. It consists of people who communicate, coordinate, and collaborate. And at the end there, they need to achieve the, uh, the sentence in the blue colored uh, letters. Yeah, it's common goal or set of goals so you need to have a common goal mean to say that there's a reason you guys are working in organization the reason is trying to achieve uh, a specific goal that your organization trying to achieve whatever it is maybe it is in terms of uh, getting better projects or developing software or creating toys or creating products so all of those are common goals that you and your co-workers share yeah? next is foundation of ob so these are all the foundation of the ob you could say that uh, people in the past uh, they didn't really study about organizational behavior so that is a misconception yeah i mean to say that in the past or people were already intrigued on how individuals or group of people interact uh, within organization as you can take a look at the first example here is by plato itself yeah plato is a greek philosopher he studied or uh, 
one of his studies that he's made is the essence of leadership. So being a leader, uh, what makes a good leader, what kind of vision of a, a leader should have in organization was already studied by Plato over 2000 years ago. So I mean to say that OV, even though it's relatively new, but it's not 100% new because it has parts of it uh, scattered all around history, such as uh, from Confucius, the virtues of ethics and leadership, Adam Smith, the benefit of job specialization and division, meaning to say you have to put people at the right place. You, uh, for instance, a person that is very good in mathematics, but you put them somewhere that doesn't use that talent. So it, it's not putting the right people at the right place. Yeah. Or uh, under here, Max Weber, uh, rational organization, work ethics, and char charismatic leadership, humanizing the organization, meaning to say that you, you put people in. Uh, you put people in the in the place that they are suited for, that they are positions the m position position the most suitable with. Yeah. So you can take a look at this. So this is foundation. Uh, how uh, OB was generated throughout the history. Yeah. So why do we study OB? So it's basically to understand people, to predict what they're gonna do, to influence other workers. So I believe you are, if you are officer or if you are manager in your organization, you need to influence your employees or your co-workers. So all, by understanding OB perfectly, you can do that yeah, and control their behavior. So this is the extension of OB itself. I think it's, I think it's really clear. It's really straight cut. Yeah, not much of discussion here. But in case uh, you're not clear in, in any of this definition, contact me types of individual behavior so this is a type of individual behavior that we will tend to see in organization number one is task performance so what is task performance is goal or directed behavior under the individual's control that support organizational behavior uh, objective so so employees that has high task performance they will uh, they will focus more in the work they will do a lot more they will become much more efficient they will become more effective while employees that has low task performance they wouldn't focus more they will lazy around they will not do their work properly so you can take a look example there concern for work matters no delay punctuality participative and contributive that is an example of good task performance uh, while bad task performance are basically the opposite of all of them yeah next organizational citizenship so i think from the word itself i think it's really clear because citizenship we say you are really a part of the organization meaning say when you go to work you don't really feel that you're a foreigner you really feel that you're one part of the organization rather than someone else that you don't know uh, uh, that you work together so you are part of a family you're part of a citizen and you're a citizen of that particular organization uh, you can take a look at this uh, helping the needy innovative giving ideas for improvement aware concern willing to help because when you're a citizen of that organization you are willing to help other people to achieve the, the same thing as what you are trying to achieve so that is being to say that uh, you are being part of the citizen citizenship uh, as well here counterproductive behavior you can take the corruption inappropriate communication harassing co-workers creating unnecessary conflict drama lah. yeah I believe so yeah so this is a another behavior as well I think it's very clear joining and staying with the organization so either you want to stay with the organization or you want to leave I mean to say if the if another another company is offering you a job you will straightforward jump out of the boat and join that organization so this is whether you want to join or stay in the organization that is the kind of behavior so if you want to stay in the uh, in the organization regardless how many are better offers that you get out there you will stay because you are loyal with the organization maintaining work attendance maintaining work at required times low in absenteeism high in presentism as well yeah so you want you need to show that you are performing well uh, just like i believe some of you right now are doing work from home so those are good example of uh, showing uh, uh, showing that you're having or uh, you're doing good attendance in the workplace at your home contemporary challenges for organizations or OB plans so these are like challenges that we have nowadays for OB or things that have been going on think issues that are important under OB so we have a uh, five here yeah 
okay so we, the first one is globalization to say well, our interaction is not only for Malaysia we interact with people from all around the world for, perhaps you have a co-worker that is working in a branch in America or a branch in Japan or a branch in China so we collaborate together there's a mixture of language there's a mixture of culture perhaps things that you were not uh, familiar before this now you are uh, you are doing it because uh, of globalization for instance uh, the best way of showing globalization is our class right now I mean like we're living in Malaysia we're living in Sabah right now but you're hearing me giving you a lecture on globalization in English so that's a an example of how globalization has formed our world right now yeah so these are but that's not only about culture it also talks about economy it talks about social talks about connectivity and interdependence means say you are relying towards the other people outside of, outside of the country to solve a particular issue in your organization yeah so and say you are working with people from other countries at the same time it, it's global infrastructure workforce diversity so workforce diversity is divided between two yeah so the first one is surface level I mean to say surface is uh, on the top or only the skin part I mean to say you can take a look at me right now you can see the surface level di diversity you can take a look at me I'm a male I have dark hair I have a uh, fairly 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 darker complexion perhaps but uh, I'm not so sure uh, I have a master mustaches on my face uh, I have a, a black eye pupil so those are surface level diversity you can you can differentiate people by their um, their clothes their their height their their physical attributes such as uh, but uh, we already explained like are they wearing glasses are they wearing tudung are they wearing anything else to show that uh, what uh, ever religion they are okay what uh, kind of color do, uh, hair color do they have so those are surface level uh, diversity you can take a look example there yeah so deep levels is in terms of your personalities belief values and attitude you cannot possibly determine a person's personality just by uh, a glimpse of their look or a glimpse of their uh, face because these are deep level you cannot uh, un you cannot predict you cannot uh, read just by surface value alone so you have to know them you have to get to know them you have to be involved with them be their friends or be around the environment to see uh, what are their attitudes what are their beliefs and what are their personalities so those are workforce diversity and how it is being spread into deep and uh, surface level these are the generational cohort I mean to say that this is part of the diversity as well I mean to say that uh, diversity is uh, not only on your age or religion or sex but it is in terms of your age you can take a look at here the, the types of generation I believe some of you are X generation some of you are Y generation uh, those are born in 1979 next we have the Z generation so these are different with with different researchers they have different uh, different names for instance certain researchers would put a uh, Y generation from 1985 and till 1995 so that's why Y generation but in this kind of research they're showing that uh, Y generation is after 1979 so it is changing yeah so our parents or our grandparents are sometimes the baby boomers or the silent generation before 1946 so uh, different people in different generation has different way of thinking attitudes toward workplace yeah I believe you have been working with uh, older people in your organization or uh, some of you have been working with younger uh, younger people in uh, your organization the way they think the way they operate in organization is different because they have they were up they, they, they were brought up differently than you with different technology different cultures so those are generational gaps that you have to uh, understand the diversity of generation generational issues Evolving employment relationship, aligning the workplace with employees' like expectation. I mean, say you want to make sure that they are set, they are satisfied in their work. You, they have to have flexible hour or contingent work, work-life balance. Everybody wants to have work-life balance. It's not about work nowadays. It's a, uh, it's living. It's no use living without uh, knowing uh, the world itself. I mean, say some people are very workaholic. All they know is uh, work, 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 nine to five every day. Yeah. But some people want life, uh, life balance. So they want to have family. They want a career. They want to have friends. They want to have good health. 
those are really important I think and I believe that each one of you here are also uh, decide, are thinking that these are important factors in your life as well yeah virtual work uh, especially what I'm doing right now yeah telecommuting or teleworking remote work-life balance however lead to social isolation yeah so all of these are part of virtual work as well anchors mean to say anchors or the fundamentals what 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 connects ob with other subjects yeah so let's take a look at the first one here multidisciplinary when we talk about ob multidisciplinary it refers that it encompass many other disciplines such as uh, psychology such as uh, neurology those are theories and uh, management as well these theories are combined to uh, to form organizational behavior because organizational behavior involves people and people have different way of looking the world so so is the same with other subjects in understanding people and organization so it uh, adopts many from other disciplines most majorly from psychology and management. systematic research all uh, all the data that we obtain from OB uh, from OB itself or being generated from OB itself is not random because you have to have a proper research so that uh, the uh, the result is reliable the result is valid in order for discussion or to to prove something or to do something with it so this example systematic research you reduce numbers uh, pie chart contingency a particular action may have different consequences in the uh, different situation need to diagnose the situation and best select under those conditions so this is the word that i want you guys to remember contingencies mean to say they are uh, a variable that is going to change in the future uh, what are happening right now for instance you can plan you can plan whatsoever you want for instance uh, we're planning a trip to Kundasang but the contingencies are uh, there's there's a lot for instance where, whether your friends are available or whether you have the money to go there or whether there whether you have good weather at that time or whether coronavirus has gone so those are example of contingencies that you should consider because in OB itself we have set of theories but all these theories depends on contingencies you can have the best theories out there but if the environment doesn't fit it then the theory cannot be applied properly so example of contingency research you can take a look at this here in the slide yeah uh, multiple levels of analysis i think we talked about this in the earlier part of the ch chapter I and mean, say you're not only talking about one person but a lot of other layers in the organization open system ob views organization as open system that interact with environment so it it uh, it connects with people outside of organization it connects with the top of the organization it connects with the bottom of the organization so all of these are interrelated yeah so that's what it, it's meant by open system conclusion here i think yeah i think you guys can read on your own yeah but basically ob studies about people think what what people think feel and act in and around in organization so it's a uh, imagine yourself you're studying uh, ob is basically studying about yourself uh it's it's a really fun subject because uh, there's a lot of information that you will get uh, from this particular course to understand your co-workers your boss your subordinate especially you yeah so i hope that you will take uh focus in understanding ob itself so i think that is the end for this particular slide so if you have any question don't uh, don't forget to contact me in the meantime don't forget to uh, <laughs> subscribe like and comment please comment your metric number uh, your group number as well as indicate whether you are pjj students or not okay just write pjj students there, okay so i see you guys on our next lesson thank you